Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and today I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Libra. If Libra is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. Okay, let's get started. Okay, and let's see... What do these tea leaves have to say today? And so you will have to forgive me. I am still sick. I am still all congested. I am working diligently to get that worked out. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but you know what? <laughs> it just doesn't seem to want to go. So um, thank you for putting up with my congestion. Now, our card for today is the wheel, and uh, definitely um, one of the more powerful archetypes, uh, definitely about making some kind of decision, uh, you know, hopefully in regards to good fortune, uh, but this could be any kind of decision, really. And so let's start right here. We have a serpent. Okay. And you can almost imagine it swimming through water. It has kind of that flat head that reminds me of something like, uh, like a dragon a little bit, but also what I would imagine some kind of, um, uh, archaic, like, uh, you know, sea monster would look like. And so we have the serpent swimming through water and we have the circle, right? Coming to completion. And so uh, when I look at this, it makes me think that there is a necessity to be in your place of knowledge using your, your reason, your logic, okay? Uh, definitely being discerning right? About whatever the situation that is arising happens to be, um, you have to keep your head together with this one. Keep a keen eye out. Uh, now, the circle really is, and we even have, uh, you know, the circle uh, with the little dot in the middle, the impregnated circle, a sign of um, God, sometimes solar God, uh, and this is um, very much coming into that place of enlightenment, of understanding, of being fully empowered in this uh, circumstance, right? And so, uh, you know, I really think in, in plain speaking, um, really is just about looking at all of your options here figuring out what is going to be the best way to go. Okay. Um, because ultimately, ultimately with that, uh, wheel of fortune, the fortune, there is a sense of, um, a gift being laid at your feet. Okay. And that's wonderful, but what strings are attached what little ripples happen when we take in that gift, when we accept it? What will happen? <laughs> you know, um, it's kind of like that monkey paw, that wish, right? We have to think about what are all of the things that could go wrong here? You know, um, we have to be very thoughtful and discerning about our choices in the matter. And now I do see that crawfish from the, um, the lunar, the, the regular, you, the whatever, oh, my brain, um, full of me. <laughs> I shouldn't say that's gross, but my brain, I just, um, you got that brain fog from feeling just, out of sorts from being sick, I guess, but from the lunar card, the moon, right? And usually not in the Thoth deck, but usually there is the crawfish or it looks like a little lobster kind of. And this is supposed to symbolize some kind of um, lament, some kind of emotional turmoil, sadness, 
um, loss even. And so I look at this and it looks like it's surrounded by people. And even here we have, um, it looks like two people in an um, embrace, like they're dancing almost. And I look at this and I think, uh, there's so many good things happening. It's like, uh, being at a party and you're the only one there that's just really like, you know, disconnected. Uh, there's almost like a sense of dissociation from everything that's happening and um, almost the feeling that you can't get past in some way. And I feel like really, you know, this could be um, that you are sensing some kind of disharmony happening beneath everything. Um, there's a lot to be happy about. There's a lot to celebrate. Um, but there, there's something that you just don't trust in it all. Something is amiss, right? And I feel like, you know, like in a movie in those with a crowded shot and there's the one person just standing there, right? Expressionless. Um, or maybe in a, a state of sorrow or something, um, kind of like that. I, I feel like you are still and not a bad thing necessarily. I don't think that this is like any kind of torture, you know, emotional or spiritual, but I do think that, um, you are noticing, you are noticing more than usual. And, um, you know, it's important for us to listen to that, uh, that little pang of whatever it is. Now, we have to be careful not to dive all the way into it, right? Sometimes um, it feels like we we must, right, to honor whatever this is, this this ability to sense something. Um, we we go all the way in. We completely devote ourselves to whatever this you know thing is. But it, but these are transient emotions, like anything else. So um, do not let it take hold of you. Okay, be aware, be discerning, you know, keep your eyes, ears open, but do not let it take control of you. Okay, do not get lost in all of it. Uh, and now I'm looking at this one. I'm trying to figure out what kind of animal is this really? This one looks like the kangaroo. Um, and the kangaroo for me is almost always the mother, um, the mother goddess or the mother energy, mother archetype. Okay. And so I feel if you have a mother, if you have a mother figure, still go to her, be with her. If you are close, if you are open to that, go and spend some time, ask for some advice, ask for, you know, some, um, some unconditional love. And now if you don't have this, or if this is you, if you are that mother, um, and you know, uh, maybe this is that you need to go be with your family. Okay. Uh, whatever it is exactly, whatever the dynamic is, it really, this is important. This consciousness, I think that this is where, um, you're going to be finding your grounding and really being able to, Open up kind of examining why you're feeling these other things uh, in a way that is safe and supported. Okay. It's not, you know, this, the mother energy, um, while unconditional is also, there's not, oops, there's not a lot of room for, um, kind of, what's the word? BS, I guess. <laughs> Um, a mother likes to get things done. A mother likes to get to the core of things. A mother, um, you know, in the, hopefully in the best, in the best way, um, in the boat, in the best circumstances, I should say, uh, does not allow for a lot of getting lost in all of the illusion of things. 
Okay. A mother has, uh, that perception that most other beings for one reason or another, um, it just really develops. And I think that a lot of it is survival. It is, you, you just become very acutely aware of your surroundings, of your child's well-being, um, you know, and so on. Uh, and this, and but at the same time, creating an, an environment where there is a lot of safety and love at like a nest, you know, like a warm little nest. And so, um, sometimes we must return to that. Okay. Um, because that's where we can explore things without feeling like we're going to lose ourselves completely. And, um, you know, with the, uh, kangaroo motif, there is that pouch. They are marsupials. They carry their babies in the little pouch. Uh, and so there is that real, um, wanting to return to that kind of, you know, primordial place, that safe beginning. Uh, and, and, you know, I think we all do. I like to picture myself going into the, you know, universal womb when I get into my cozy little blanket at night and I'm exhausted. I can't, you know, get on my feet one more time tonight. I just am so tired and I crawl in there <coughs> and I lay next to my daughter and I listen to her little breathing and she's so cute and bundled up and um, you know, I close my eyes and I, I feel that I am in that universal womb. I am in that place of, um, eternal, uh, safety, creativity, um, of potential, of love, of light, um, you know, of, of that warm, um, that warm nectar of the gods, really, you know, the thing that flows through all things, the thing that brings emotion and love and life and spirit and all of that. And, um, I am wrapped up in it and it takes me off like a portal or at least the lubricant lubricant to the portal. Um, you can think of like the Stargate, right? With the water there, um, to pass through into the many other sides. And so, um, you know, I think that really getting into this energy, if this is, you know, actual, or if this is part of your vision work, your interior work, your active imagination, um, maybe something to use as kind of a prompt. Okay. And let's see. Before my voice gives out, we're getting close here. Um, and I keep looking at the, I'm like, it reminds me of a trash can. Um, so I'm going to read it as a trash can. And really, I feel like um, as you're going through this process, there will be things to toss out. You know, I feel that when we get into these places where we are making decisions and we are, um, you know, really deciding, uh, what, what is important right now? What is important to this journey? Um, you know, what does not serve me any longer? You know, a lot of things, they have to get recycled. They have to get thrown out into the, into the bin, you know, and taken away. And, and so it is, you know, not everything is meant to stay in our life forever. And so, um, you know, this might be a time of beginning to cut away some of those things. Uh, now we have this one. We have a, a wildfire going. We also have a person who is tending it. And so, um, you know, with all of this, I really believe that um, you are taking care of that really interior flame. And there is a brightness to you. Um, you might feel worn out, tired, um, you know, just like you want to kind of hibernate for a while and that's okay because really even then you are doing the work, okay? You are taking care of yourself and those vital energies, those, that fire, that interior fire that we all, um, have to mind, right? And I still can't decide. It looks like another lobster to me. Okay, so we have another lobster. And this is fully in 
that metaphysical place. So I kind of wonder if there is some kind of, well, art, like real archetypal melancholy kind of floating around. I know I think, I feel that, I, well, I don't know. I know that Saturn just uh, went direct, I think, recently. And so, oh, I've, and we are, we're going, we are coming into the time of Saturn. It is the, um, the season of Saturn here pretty soon. And this can be a time of really that existential melancholy. Um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I think that, you know, I, I personally have an affinity for Saturn and for the Saturnine work. Um, I like those dark places, uh, because, um, that's where I come from. <laughs> that's where I feel I come from in my soul. Um, but it is a place of doing the, the shadow work. Ultimately, this is really, um, kind of a metaphor deeply for that shadow work, working the lead out of the prima materia. Okay. Uh, the original material, and it is laden with the leads and the impurities. And so we must kind of go through it. And this is where we're working on the shadow work. We're working on the blockages. Um, you know, and this is, it can be very difficult work. It can be very alienating, isolating. It can be, uh, you know, a lot of terror and, and anxiety, um, and the lobster, not unlike that crawdad, is really a symbol of not only being, um, you know, fortified in a lot, of, a lot of ways, wearing the armor on the outside, but um, there is a sorrow. There is a sorrow to these watery creatures, not unlike the crab, not unlike cancer. Um, so, uh, you know, going into this, or it, kind of really presenting itself to you it makes sense to me that you would seek shelter in those motherly you know divine feminine um places okay so um it's kind of like if you could imagine you know out on the tundra that nice little uh hut or a, maybe a yurt or something out there and there's a, a fire you know burning inside of it warmth shelter and that is the mother that is that womb and um and you know you will have some, you will always have work to do but you know this this seems to be that there is work and it is spiritual and it is uh you know, it is in that interior, but it flows out into all aspects of your life. Um, you know, and I think it's important to have um, healthy distractions, but do not run from it. Okay, because it only becomes stronger as they talk about the shadow, the shadow becomes out of control when we absolutely deny it. It will not go away. Aspects of ourselves that we don't like, they don't go away just because we decide, I don't want to look at that. I don't want to identify with that. It will come up one way or another. Okay, so we have to work on the integration. We have to work on processing all of it, right? Uh, I just got actually myself a new workbook. I should next time maybe I'll make a community post about it but um I got it off of Amazon and it, it's it's a workbook and um I started to flip through it and you know I think the shadow work never ends it's not something you just like complete and you're like oh okay now I get my certification <laughs> and I'm done no this is something that <clears throat> will will continue 
throughout life. Okay, and so we do have these moments where it does come up, it shows up in our life, and we have to work on it as much as we can. Okay, so we do, we have the entrance to the temple, uh, and so, um, you know, I feel like the other part of this is creating a sacred space for yourself, setting up something that feels um, very much you, sacred, safe. Um, a representation of something um, interior and eternal, okay? So if this is an altar, if it's a picture on the wall, um, one thing for, I like, I have altars all over, but um, in my bedroom, which I don't hang a lot of things, I have a um, picture of, um, of Mary Magdalene. I have an icon and then I also have um, a picture of um, of Hathor, okay? And so, uh, this, even if it's just something like this, a painting, um, a sigil, a talisman, a piece of, you know, I like to, I do rope magic, um, prayers tied into knots, and uh, just hanging from the wall. I have them all over my, my house. Um, you know, whatever it is for you. It can, it can be whatever. But finding something, making something, putting up something, creating a space that is sacred. Okay, while you're doing this work. Um, it is important for us to express ourselves while we are processing things, while we are integrating. Okay, this is why art therapy is so important. This is why just, you know, being a creative person while you, all the time, in my opinion, but especially while you are doing, um, doing the sacred work. Okay, creating. Very important. Uh, I also see that we have, um, we have a little, an apple, okay, which is nice. That means that we will have some good health, a period of good health. And, um, you know, I really do see that there will be an ease of any kind of tension coming. Um, I think once you get into this process and you really are doing it, it's scary to think, oh, I have to really work on it. Whenever I stop doing therapy for a while and then I go but I, I always I'm like oh this is gonna be so hard so and it is hard but once I get into it I feel such a relief and I think that you will feel this as well okay all right so I'm gonna put this down we're gonna do the dreamers deck and this is 40 affirmations for pursuing your dreams from the I know collection and I'm just gonna go ahead and stop where it feels right and I will flip this it says I know that for every door that life closes a new one opens around the corner I am optimistic and there you go <laughs> and there you go you got to decide on them doors you know, which ones are closing, which one life doesn't just close them. Sometimes we have to close them and we have to decide. All right, I'm going down a different hallway. All right, I'm going to the other side of the house and we're going to see what's over here. Um, you know, and, and, and that's important. It is, it is important. So Libra, I'm going to go ahead and say thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor uh, to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it helps us um, grow the channel. It helps the channel a lot. Uh, if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing so. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next videos are coming out. And... Uh, if you want to leave a comment, I read all of them. I, they mean a lot to me. They really do. And, uh, again, I thank you for putting up with my sickness. <laughs> I just, you know, it sucks to be sounding like this. And, uh, it's, it's my work to be talking and doing these readings and, you know, not only for, uh, for you all, but just a lot of this is so important to my own path. Uh, but to hear myself, I think, my goodness, I sound pretty crummy. <laughs> so 
anyways, uh, I thank you and we will talk in a few days. I hope I will be a hundred percent once more. <laughs>